What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay, my journey to 10,000 listings on eBay. Today, I'm going to go over my top five mistakes in building my store to 500 live listings. This is my low-key Husky store, and I just want to show you guys sort of some trials and tribulations on the way to this level. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Just gonna pause that so we can take a look. So I'm gonna wait a couple seconds for people to join me, but we're gonna get straight into it um, and go over the exact um, issues with getting to uh, 10,000 live listings. Okay, so I'm sorry, 500 listings in this new store. So this is my low key Husky store. A lot of you guys have been following me on uh, as the store grows. I know there's about a there's about a thousand people watching this store so far. Um, and I'm just going to go over sort of the five biggest mistakes that I made along the way. And the first mistake that I'm going to go over is not going to garage sales to start with. Uh, I started with everything, retail arbitrage, thrifting, garage sales. But in retrospect, I made the most money on the items that I got from garage sales. And I only started this with 200 bucks. Now, that's more money than a lot of people have to get started. But for this particular experiment, I started with 200 and looking at the items that I sold in my store, um, the highest profit items were like this DVD VCR combo that I sold for 200 bucks that I bought for 28, um, this bike rack that I bought for 20 and sold for 250. Of course, I do have some retail arbitrage in here that was, that was high as well, but the majority of my home runs were all garage sales. If I could redo it, I would have spent all the money at garage sales instead of uh, dabbling with a bunch of different ideas. When you just get started, I think garage sales are the best, like this Vietnam deployment jacket I got for 50 cents and sold for $56 to Germany. Um, if I could start over again, again, my number one mistake was not spending 100% of my money at garage sales. So if you're just getting started on eBay, I recommend you go to a garage sales because the cost the barrier to entry is so low. Um, if you get there early, people don't mind when you're looking at items up on your phone. Just say, hey, look, um, I'm trying to make some extra money. Do you have stuff for sale? And look everything up. Don't, don't waste that initial capital you have in the beginning. Look for items that are new. Um, in the chat, they're also saying, um, moving sales as well, garage sales, moving sales, estate sales, great place to get started. My number one mistake and tip for you guys is to start there. Okay, my number two and number three tips are based on metrics. So I wanna show you guys um, the, my, hopefully you guys can see my screen. Uh, let me know if you can't. But I wanna go over the two metrics that I made a mistake on not paying attention to right when I started. Um, and the first number is this listed and sold number. So this is the amount of inventory you have in your store if you were to sell it at asking price. So right now I have it listed at 13,629. It's early in the month, so I don't have that many sales. So I would say roughly I have $12,000 retail worth of stuff in my store. Now I do have best offer on them, so I will take a little bit less and I'll go over that in just a second. But this is sort of a, a compass for how well your store is doing, how much stuff is actually listed. So I have 13,620 nine dollars worth of stuff listed and i'm looking at roughly a one-third profit on the on these items so it's safe to say i have around 4k of profit in this thirteen thousand six hundred twenty nine dollars because i'm going to accept a little bit of a deal on some of the items so i'm not going to sell it for the full 13.6 and to give you a rough idea uh, I'm selling a little over a third um, of these items. So for example, in this store, I have 17 items to ship from yesterday and today. So I'm selling at more than 1%. So I'm above the one third selling rate on this low key Husky store. But um, just as a reference, if you're buying quality items, you should they should sell within 90 days. So it gives you a three month turn. So this is kind of a, a rule of thumb that I think is pretty going to be pretty accurate. I don't know, let me know in the chat if you guys have a different experience. But this listed and sold amount number, if you're selling one third of it a month, so let's just say I'm selling 4,000 of it, and then one third of that is profit, you're looking at around $1,300 profit, which is about accurate for this store. Um, right now, it's a little bit higher than that, but just as a rough estimate, 
um, $1,360 is sort of the estimated profit per month. So for me to get um, to $1,000, um, it really needs to be in the like, I don't know, maybe it doesn't need to be this high. It depends on how fast your items are selling. But in the fifty dollars to $100,000 range of stuff listed, you're really going to be making that full-time income that everyone is looking for. Everyone wants to get um, uh, to a full-time income to replace their, their job so you at least have the opportunity to potentially quit your job. So Christina um, is in the chat is asking, how much am I willing to take below my asking price? That's a great question, and that's actually going to be my number four tip, which I'm going to get to in just a second. But the these two numbers, the sell-through rate per month, and then also the amount you have listed, are key. Um, you have to ask a lot in order to make a lot of money. So I think, you know, in a few more months, since I'm rolling all my money back into this inventory, I should be at the um, fifty thousand dollar mark listed and sold. I think at that point, I'll be making a full-time income on eBay, which I define as a thousand dollars a month net and around three thousand dollars a month sales. Okay, so. The second and third tips are not paying attention to the amount listed and sold and not paying attention to how long things are going to take to sell. So now when I look at an item, I'm like, am I going to sell this in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? And I'm thinking about that right when I'm buying it instead of just, is this cheap and does it sell for more? I forgot to think about how long it was going to take, but not making that mistake anymore. Okay. The fourth tip is I actually did not know that... Um, Best offer increases your sell-through rate, or at least it has for me. I think that it increases the activity on your item because people can offer. And I am setting up an auto decline for some of my items, meaning that um, as my store grows and grows, I don't have a lot of time to answer best offers. So for me to save time, I just have a certain amount that I'm going to accept, which is about 85, 80 to 85% of what I'm asking is what I'm going to accept. So for example, if I have an item up for $25, I will be able to accept $20 on it, and that has helped versus me just putting a $20 buy it now without a best offer. I've been selling more items at a $25 with a best offer and accepting 20. So just one way of doing it, um, I'm going to add best offer to most of my items with an auto decline, because I don't, I wanna spend my time listing, not answering best offers. So. Um, there's different rules of thumbs when it comes to this. A lot of people do um, something like they don't dec auto decline any offer, but they have an auto accept. And so if somebody offers you $5 on a $25 item, you can respond back and say, hey, do I have this pricing correctly? Why are you offering me only $5? Um, how about 20, which is more reasonable? And sometimes those people will accept the offer. For me, I've just... Um, don't have time at this point to handle the best offer. So I'm just having it auto accept $20 or more. That has really improved my sales. I mean, I've only been doing this for three months on this store. Uh, and in my other store, I've always had best offer and I do not have an auto decline. So that's not the idea. So, okay. So this new store, I just hit the 500 listing mark. Um, let's see. Buying in one. Oh, okay. I'll get into my fifth tip in just a second, which should help you guys as well. I just hit 500 active listings, and my average selling price is around 30 bucks. So let's go into my um, store sale. And I like to set up my store on the, um, I like to rank my store from most expensive to cheapest to give people an idea that I'm sort of a more premium store. And that's how I set up my store for people to view so they can see sort of the good stuff first. And then, uh, you know, my idea is to give people the impression that I sell only premium goods for cheaper prices. That's what I'm looking for as far as the um, look and feel of the store. Um, I did hit 111 feedback now, starting to grow. I'm starting to get feedback every single day in this new store, which is awesome because you can get that um, the traction going. Okay, so the fifth tip that I want to give that I think should really help you guys is I'm going to consolidate my buying into one or two days. Instead of sourcing every single day, I was doing that when I first started, when I went full time three weeks ago, but it's not efficient because you're wasting gas, you're, you're taking the time out of your day. So I'm really just hitting it really hard one or two days, trying to get 350 items, which is my goal of things I want to get because I'm trying to fill up both this store and the other store. Um, this store, I really have only a goal of replenishing 50 to 100 items a week. And my other store, 
200 to 250 items. So trying to get the 350 items a day um, in two, I'm sorry, 350 items a week in one or two days sourcing. So I really want to consolidate my buying. I think that's really going to help. Um, and then I want to spend the majority of my time hanging out at home listing. Um, if you guys can see, this is what I listed today. So I listed about 85 items. I hope you guys can see that. Let me know in the chat if you guys can see. How many items can you guys list in a day? I'm at around 50 to 100 items a day when I'm listing. Um, and it's really also helped me not doing, I'm not listening to any more um, YouTubers for the most part. I'm listening to music. So that's really helped me um, pay attention when I'm listening, make less mistakes, list more. And I, and I think that listening to music and not YouTube has been great. Actually, I still listen to YouTube for the music, but I'm not doing um, a lot of um, informational stuff because if I listen to podcasts or other um, eBayers, I basically start thinking and I don't list at that point because when I'm thinking, I'm not actually doing. So um, it's just like the same concept of you can't talk and listen at the same time. So when I'm working with people and interviewing people now, I'm really taking the time to just listen and absorb what they're saying rather than talking too much. Um, so, you know, trying to really get in there. Jacob in the chat is mentioning there's not a lot of yard sales where he lives. Um, so he needs to buy stuff online. That is great. That's an, that's, it's, it shouldn't stop you if you don't have yard sales in your area. There are tons of people in my groups that don't have any yard sales around them. They do a hundred percent online arbitrage, buying stuff online. My girlfriend basically only does that. So she sold 27,000 in the last year, just um, online arbitrage basically from the stores that she likes. She would wait till it goes on clearance. She'd buy a bunch of it. She'd hand it to me. I do all the work for her. And she's just like an automatic money machine, right? So online arbitrage is a great way to do it. And also it saves you the gas and the time of going out hunting. Um, the, the one downside is that your margins might be a little bit lower than a yard sale when someone's just trying to move or get rid of some stuff. Downsize and they're just getting rid of things pennies on the dollar. That's going to be the best use of your money, obviously, um, because you're also hitting stuff before it hits the thrift store. At the end of a garage sale, if you guys um, go early and you're the first ones there, and then you continue throughout the day, and at the end, you're one of the last people there, you're able to get those last items really cheap and sometimes even for free. Let's see here. Um, so I'm not sure how many people are in the chat, but if you guys can help me out, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe to my Patreon, I don't usually promote this very often, but I do have a Patreon page where people can basically work with me directly. I am trying to help a thousand people make a full-time income on eBay. At $20 or more a month, you can text me nine to five while I'm out in the wild and help you guys um, list, help you with listing, help you with photographs. However, this has been doing really well. I have 69 patrons. I've only had two people cancel, so obviously I am providing a little bit of value. That's worth it because it automatically renews if you don't cancel. So that's one way if you guys want more access to me. But again, it's always free if you just email me. It just takes longer for me to respond, and I don't give you my phone number. So let's see. Any tips or tricks to list more quickly? Tons of tips to, to list more quickly. I'm doing a lot of my drafting right now um, on the computer. So if I'm, let's say for example, I'm listing um, this Mega Man t-shirt. So I'll search for a Mega Man t-shirt. I'll click sell similar and I will upload the pictures and finish the description on my mobile device. And I use a program called um, Text Expander. To, to store all my snippets. So for example, on a t-shirt, I'll store the chest measurement from armpit to armpit and the length of the item. And I do that to reduce questions and save time and also to reduce returns. I say, that every, and I copy and paste, please check the measurements of your favorite shirt so that this will fit properly and where you can both avoid a return, right? So um, I like to package my items in this plastic film because it saves me space. That's the only reason I do it. Um, otherwise, I would not do it and it cost me an extra three to four cents an item rather than putting this directly in a poly mailer, but it does save space because I can squish it to a really small amount. So those are the five tips. I'm just going to summarize them real quick and then we can get into some Q&A. So the first one was um, if I could redo it, I would have spent my entire budget at garage sales because sometimes you can make 10 times your money at a garage sale. Um, in my souls, you guys can see a lot of my home runs, like this um, DVD player. I'm selling a lot of VCRs, 
like all the electronics people basically give away because they take up they take up so much space. I'm gonna get heavy into the golf industry as I get more capital. It costs a little more money to buy golf stuff, but it moves really quickly all year. Just because it's so expensive, brand new, a lot of people are looking for pre-owned stuff. Also, I love shoes. Shoes take up more space, but the profit margins are fantastic, especially on pre-owned. And so I'd like to have at least half of my inventory shoes, as surprising as that is, but I just I love shoes so much. The second thing is not paying attention to this total amount listed and then also my sell through percentage. So making sure for me, I sell at least one third of my items every month and I grow this listed amount every single month. That's the whole goal. Once this hits about 50,000, I think I'll make the $1,000 a week that I need. Of course, I have a slower sell through rate. If you guys sell all your items every month, you don't need as much capital, right? But I'm looking to build a, and maintain a, a more um, a more expensive, higher ASP, average selling price, slower sell-through rate store. Instead of like, you guys remember my my um, my guest Prince a couple of weeks ago. He sells a hundred percent of his inventory every month, right? If you look at other sellers like Nicole State, she also sells 70, 80 percent plus of her inventory every month. That cuts your need for capital way down. You may only need a third as much. If you're selling all of it to make the capital that you need each month so it depends on your business model for me I want to sell one-third of it so for me to make a thousand dollars a week this really needs to be in the 50k range and you guys can follow my store as I grow it um, my average selling price oh somebody had asked that before so far is 43 bucks so so far um, I've done let's see $10,264 in this store. So $10,264 sold 240 something items. Actually, I don't want to guess. I'll tell you guys exactly how many items I sold. Let's see. You guys, this is how you this is how you peep somebody's store. You go into the sold and you see how many items they sold in the last 90 days. So 237, not including multi-quantities, probably more like 250. So around 40 bucks a listing so far. I wanna get that to $60, as you guys know. I want a $60 average selling price. It's gonna take a little while to get there, but I will be patient. And the fourth one is not using best offer. So I'm gonna use all best offer. And then the fifth tip is to consolidate all your buying into one or two days. Okay, now we got some questions. Um, Kareem is asking, how do I figure in shipping when buying the item or do you when buying big items? Um, absolutely. I'm looking for, just to give you an idea of how I buy VCRs, DVD players, combos, I'm looking for 10X sold. So if I'm buying it for 10, it needs to sell for $100 on eBay, or I don't even mess with it because there's so much risk involved with buying a VCR. Most of the time, you don't have the chance to plug it in. Um, you can't test it, you don't have the TV. If, you're, if you shake it and there's stuff loose in it, don't buy it, in my opinion unless you want to spend time fixing it, but they're really, really expensive to ship. They are take a long time to pack. You have to test them. So if you're not selling them for 10X what you purchased it for, I don't even mess with it. Um, I am moving towards um, offering free shipping, even on the heavy items, and just marking it all the way to, um, let's say, Maine. I'm in California, so picking the largest distance, offering free shipping with the best offer, and setting up the auto decline. So. It's up to you, you can do whatever you want. You can do plus shipping and you can do calculated shipping, however you wanna do it. I'm just for simplicity's sake, because I'm trying to build a huge store, uh, free shipping across the board makes it easier for me. Um, I also carry a pocket scale Kareem so that I can actually uh, weigh the items in the wild and see if it's under uh, five, if it's under eight ounces, if it's under 10 ounces, whatever you wanna do. Let's just take a look. Um, Evermore is saying Amazon FBA is better for the, the big electronics. I agree. I send uh, most of my heavy electronics in the Amazon and I am building in a 10% return rate, which is very, very high. But again, it's a, it's a more risky endeavor. That's why I'm shooting that direction. Um, the reason why I think not offering best offers is considered a mistake because for some reason my items with the best offer seem to sell faster. So, um, I don't know, I have items that are $20, buy it now, no best offer, and $25, buy it now, our best offer, and have an auto accept $20 and higher, those items are selling really fast. Um, I, I listed 50 shoes yesterday, all buy it now, best offer with auto decline, and four of them sold um, for a little bit less than what I was asking on best offer. 
Let's see. Yeah, and that's why I have auto decline um, on the best offer because I don't I don't actually respond to any offers at this point. So twenty dollars and below, it declines. Twenty dollars and over, I accept. I don't even get any emails for the offers. So I'm really, really loving that way of doing it. Let's see. Do I check comps when you price close? Obvious. Or, I mean, I 100% check comps on every single item. There are no items that I just price arbitrarily. Like it's based on market. The market is king. Um, as an example, this is a um, Roca wear uh, track jacket, right? And I got it at Plato's Closet at their their three dollar sale, which is now one dollar today. If I want to go head out there again, they have it priced eighteen bucks, and they have a pretty sophisticated pricing model on eBay. They're listed between 18 and 40, right? So I can't just make up a price for what I want to get for it. Play those clauses, I think it's worth 18. The bottom of the market's 18. I priced it at 19, right? So all my items, I'm going to look at the market and, and look at the ways that people price them, people mark them. And I'm really, really enjoying going to different retail stores to see how they price items. Play those closet is a huge chain with a lot of data. They priced it at 18, that's probably the market, right? Because they, they know what they're doing. On eBay, people are expecting a little bit of a deal. So 18 free shipping, not my favorite model because this is, this is barely one pound also, which is saves you a couple of bucks. If I had to ship this in a flat rate envelope, it'd be like $6. One pound is like $4.30. That makes a big difference when you're selling a cheap item. Uh, Al Capone says the only thing he doesn't like about best offers is that buyers don't have to pay immediately. Agreed. Um, I have only, uh, let's see, only one item awaiting payment. So it does happen. Sometimes that number goes as high as like five or 10 people who have not paid. It's a little bit annoying, but it's all right because um, people are always looking for a deal. Yes, I definitely price it higher. So, for example, if I wasn't offering best offer, I would I would price this at um, I don't know sixteen dollars free shipping. I mean low end as an example, or I would price it at twenty one dollars and I would accept something of let's say nineteen or over. So I definitely price higher when I offer best offer. I also run a continuous forty eight hour sale, um, which I've been a little bit lazy with. I actually set my sale this year for the or for this month for the whole month because I'm really trying to build up inventory and not worrying about it. But ideally, I would run a 48-hour sale. So it always looks like this sale is ending in 40 hours to get people a little bit of a sense of urgency to buy now. Um, how do I handle taxes? I have a CPA um, that shares my bank account and my PayPal account. So all the money stays in one account with the PayPal. I started with 200 bucks. I've just been spending 100% of that money on new inventory over and over again. And I've made between four and six grand profit on this new low key Husky account. And that account has maybe three or $400 left in it to buy stuff if I need to. But uh, most of it's being reinvested. I have around $13,000 uh, listed. I also have a whole pile of stuff I haven't listed yet from um, Goodwill sourcing last Saturday. I actually have plenty of inventory at this point. Probably don't need to source the rest of the week. I did get, I think, 400 items on just on Saturday out there with garage sales and Goodwill and retail arbitrage, et cetera. Let's see, Josh is asking, where do I get my inventory? I'm getting a lot of it in uh, garage sales is the majority of where I'm getting it. Um, thrift stores, a little bit of online arbitrage, a little bit of the outlets. Um, my favorite store to buy at for retail arbitrage is Marshall's. Shout out to Hustler Hacks, Glenn Zuby. If you guys aren't following his channel, I've learned a lot about how to sell stuff from him. Let's see. Sorry, I'm not missing all this stuff. Um, Knight's saying he's sad I don't watch your videos. If it makes you feel better, I don't watch anybody's videos while I'm listening. Um, Knight has a Google Calendar reminder. That's a great idea. Um, if you guys are in the chat, follow Knight. I think he has a new YouTube channel as well. Plug for him. Just make sure that when you are setting up reminders in your phone um, that, I mean, it's a good way to trigger yourself to get something done. So for example, I have a call at 12 o'clock with my friend Brian, um, and so it reminds me at 11.50, get ready for your call with Brian, right? I have all these things set up to keep me in check. I also have a content schedule for YouTube, right? So the people that are on my Patreon that are paying me money every month, they expect three videos a week. 
if I'm not posting three videos a week, I have to refund these people their money. That's what they're paying me to do, right? So I only know every Monday, Wednesday, um, and Sunday, I need to release a video. I'm actually doing four videos a week right now because I'm very motivated, but um, at least three. Otherwise, I need to refund these people their money because that's what they're paying for. Let's see. Uh, Robbie, I missed your question. Let me go back and see if I can find it. Um, I missed your question, so ask it again. Uh, Bella says she has eBay automatically step in after two days if the customer hasn't paid. I think I have the unpaid auto unpaid item assistant turned on. I don't know if it's two days. I think you can set how long how long it is. Um, yeah. So I, I actually don't know how to set up the unpaid assistant for a specific amount of time, but mine is turned on, so it automatically opens the case if they don't pay. Uh, what do I mean by sharing my bank account with my account in the day? Full access may be fine. Um, that's a good idea. So right now I'm sharing my bank account, um, not my login, but my um, the, the documents. So my accountant looks at the documents from my bank account and the documents from my PayPal and matches it up. All my purchasing is done on one credit card to keep it easy. Um, and then I'm set up as an S Corp, as some of you guys know that. I pay myself a salary of $2,500 a month and the rest goes back into the business. And right now, I'm actually even putting that $2,500 back into the business because I am still living off of the income from my Facebook marketing company. Let's see. Yeah, Bella's saying you can set how long. That's perfect. So yeah, depending on how long your tolerance is, um, she sets it to 48 hours, which I think is the soonest amount of time you can open an unpaid item case. Sometimes I have customers that send me a nasty message like, how come you're opening a case only after two days of paying it? And I'm always like, because you should pay immediately. Like eBay, you shouldn't offer on things that you're not gonna buy immediately. But I understand, a lot of people wait till payday. Um, it's not unusual for me to wait longer, especially for a more expensive item. Do I get the month, how do you get the monthly limits to show up on your seller hub? Is, is this only a store option, guys? I'm not sure. Mine is just in here. If you go to customize, you can select which um, things you want to show up on your on your my eBay page so select customize and you can pick all the different things what's up Hotlanta somebody checking in um, Arabi is saying have I ever heard of the clothing company world sexiest wholesale I have I have heard of them I have not ordered from them but they do have a YouTube as well um, looking in the wholesale I have pretty decent um, I had decent results from wholesale OEM. You guys know I did that unboxing a couple of months ago. That unboxing was actually really profitable, but I haven't had much luck with that company as far as getting straight information on how you order. Um, the wholesale obviously is awesome. Shaza is asking, what is my target net margin? It's 33%, so one third. So on this item, um, I'm hoping to make $6 on an $18 sale. Let's see. Oh, Knight sends him a friendly reminder. Hey, um, your item is ready to ship. Um, give me my money, right? So that's a great way to do it. I don't do any of that. I'm hope I'm utilizing eBay's automated system to take care of the unpaying buyers for me. Most of the time, um, if a best offer is accepted, sometimes they're away from their computer. They didn't even know their offer was accepted. That's why I noticed before when um, I would manually do best offers. Sometimes people don't respond back and I'm wondering if people are old school and they're using computers to make an offer and they step away. Um, if they're only shopping on eBay desktop, I can see how that would happen. But if you have the mobile app, I don't know why people don't respond to your best offer right away. Um, what type of store do I have for this account? So the very first day I opened the basic account for 250 items, this one has a premium. So the premium store is $60 a month, and then my other store is an anchor store with the 3,000 listings. I'm totally underutilizing because I only have 2,500 up in that store. Um, I haven't done a, um, I haven't done any videos on my other store right now because it's still under construction, but I will. I'm gonna be transparent with everybody and share both stores so you guys can get an idea of what my bigger store looks like. But the goal on my bigger 10,000 item store is literally 10 times the volume of this. 
Um, shout out to Feel Good Finds Mary in the chat. If you guys haven't followed her on Instagram, go check her out. She was my very first like and comment. You got to stay loyal to your crew. Uh, what's up, girl on fire? Um, when I hit 100K, am I going to change my name to 100K on the Bay? I am not. I just want to keep my store at 10,000 listings um, and try to hit that $1 million revenue. Actually, my goal on that store is $2 million revenue. Why not? You know, even if I fail my way to a six figure income, it'll be okay. Um, are swap meets and flea markets popular? And oh, definitely. I mean, we have um, a flea market once a month in Alameda, that's the bomb, also in Treasure Island. And we also have a fantastic um, flea market that I source with West Coast Seller, which is my buddy Jordan who lives out here. I'm not going to tell you guys about where that is because it's a secret. And then there's also San Jose has a, a flea market that I'm going to check out um, with my NorCal reselling crew. But I haven't been out there yet. I've been a little bit too busy. Paul's asking, um, do you think my social – my low key Husky store has been successful because of my social media. Probably. I mean, some of the sales in here are definitely from people who watch me on YouTube. I would say not a majority, maybe a few here and there. I know some other YouTubers have a huge amount of sales from their, their social media group. Um, and I actually don't think this store is that successful. Um, it's okay. It's, it's like a medium success rate. Uh, if I had more capital, it would be slaying it because, I would only buy stuff that costs over six or sells for over sixty dollars, right? But as I build up my money, um, this account being true to the two hundred dollar challenge, so it's going to take a lot longer. I would rather buy really expensive items. I'm actually thinking it would have been better to just buy less stuff that's more expensive, but you know, I I don't have enough time to to shop offer up Craigslist. Um, right now to go meet up with people. I don't have a system to get $60 on over items. So I'm just like going to garage sales and buying everything that's over $30. Um, yeah, what's up, Ming? Yeah, as far as the Trello.com content, I, it's still coming. I just started this, so I'm working on adding more and more content in there. Uh, but good point, Ming. I'm going to increase that stuff more and more. Right now, the Patreon is mainly just helping me make these three videos a week. But as I continue, like right now, I'm making a guide on shoes. I'm making a guide on what T-shirts to buy. Um, it's coming along. It's going to take a little bit. I appreciate your patience. It's going to take a while to get there. Uh, Orlando is having a lot of luck at the state sales. State sales are great. Um, well, would I do the same thing for storing stock if I were to start over again? I would not change my inventory system. It's been fine. So like B1419 um, has been perfectly fine for um, my inventory system. I haven't had any issues finding anything. And my current system is enough for 22,000, 52,000 items. The inventory system that I have that I share in my videos, you can store 52,000 items with the same system. So I won't be surpassing my current system for a long time. Let's see. Got another offer on some shoes. Let's see. Do I need to have an eBay store? No, you do not need to have an eBay store, but I don't, it's cheaper to have an eBay store than not to have an eBay store. So you're paying $60 for a thousand listings, right? Versus 10 or 20 cents a listing. So like this store is already cheaper. Have Actually, that's not true. That's a great point, Michael. Until I hit 600 listings in this store, it's cheaper to not have a store. But I should hit 600 this month, no problem. And at that point, it is cheaper. Plus you can run uh, Markdown Manager, you can run sales, and your store looks a lot nicer in my opinion. Like if I pull it up, you can do a banner, um, you can do featured items. There's a lot of benefits with the store. If you're gonna take eBay seriously, you have to have a store. I don't know any people that, um, well, okay, with the exception of like Craigslist Hunter, I don't think he has an eBay store because he has really expensive items and you don't need an eBay store. If you're, he, he never crosses over the 600 item mark ever. I think the most items in his store are like 400. So he could do a basic store if he wanted to, but doesn't have to. Let's see. You have an account with 31 listed, but there are items you can repeat order. That's amazing. So Shirzad is doing wholesale replenishables. Great way to do your business. 
Um, takes more time up front to find your items, but then as you grow your items, you could be also like Kevin Humphreys, who's in my another one of my videos. He has only 100 listings, but 1,300 items in stock, right? Because he has multiple quantity. So great way to do it. Wholesale is going to be part of this, but wholesale is a little bit harder than only 200 bucks. So I got to build up my build up the capital. Let's see, flipping daily is that is that your offer? Awesome. Let's see. Yeah, Luke is awesome. We have a um, a weekly video on Sundays. Again, you guys want to like if you want to level up your reselling game, you should network with different people. I talk to Luke every single day, so you know we're always on each other. Like, why are you not doing this? Why are you doing this? Your store is ugly. Your face is ugly. You know, we tease each other and make things work. Let's see. Inventory is a key to being efficient. True. True. Let's see. Uh, yeah, wholesale is the bomb, and wholesale just takes a little bit more capital. No one is doing wholesale with two hundred bucks. Actually, that's not true. You can do wholesale with two hundred bucks. This is a little bit more difficult. So here's here's a live offer, guys. That just came in. Um, I, I I thought I set up this auto um, this auto decline, but I guess not. So this person, are you? Is this somebody who's in the chat? Because that's awesome. So I basically am going to split it. So I'm going to put twenty three forty nine, and we split it. If not, I'll take your original offer. I got this pair of shoes for like a dollar at, uh, I'm sorry, two dollars at a church thrift store and just trying to bulk it up. Don't mind selling this definitely pretty cheap, but that's okay. I like to ask a question when I answer a best offer. I don't know why this is not set up on auto, 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 accept, auto decline. I don't really like answering these questions um, because it takes up time that I could be listing. Let's see. Just did your first wholesale product. Uh, $225 up to $600 in sales so far. Awesome. I actually have some wholesale products in my other store. Um, yeah, so wholesale is definitely a way to go. If you guys follow King of E-commerce, Joe Wang on Instagram, he's doing like more than $10 million in sales doing wholesale. So if you wanna build a business, do wholesale. If you wanna build your margin, sell one-off items. That's what I'm in, in the process right now, building up capital. I'd like to have around 52 grand in this store before I start buying wholesale, but you can do whatever you want, guys. There's no uh, right way to do eBay. Um, Brian is doing Goodwill for used items, also doing retail arbitrage and Nike outlet. If you guys can help me out, hit the like button. Let's uh, YouTube know I'm doing a good job and helps me show up in recommended. All right, guys, I'm gonna hop off in six minutes. So if you guys have any more questions, let me know. Um, question, do I only buy shoes from garage sales? For the most part, yeah. I'm trying to really stick to that. Or, I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, here's a bunch of shoes that I am going to be cleaning and listing. Let me know if you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, I'm getting heavy into the shoe game again. Um, it's just, it's really, really cheap to get shoes that are beat up and not too difficult to clean them up and make a pretty decent business. In my 10,000 item store, we'll have 5,000 shoes. So, and I'm, I'm excited, I love shoes. So I don't really have, a, I have more of a shoe fetish than I do a foot fetish. I don't get, I don't get the, the toe cleavage thing. So all about shoes. Where do you get wholesale items? I, I could tell you, but I have to kill you, right? Wholesale connections are really hard to build, so I don't just freely give them out. But basically, you just start with um, Googling wholesale in your area, calling up local distributors, starting the relationships there. Sweet, something sold. We have... So again, I have a pretty good success rate with offers because I asked a question. So I said, can we split it at 2350? He accepted the offer live. That's pretty cool that you guys can see how I handle best offers um, live. So hopefully that guy pays soon. We can get it going. A couple more minutes, guys, and I'm gonna hop off and ship. I have like 60 items to ship today. Uh, let's see. I recommend getting a store with only 31 items. Um, no, they give you 250 items to justify a basic store. So Shazad, you, you're doing it the right way, honestly. Doing the wholesale route takes a little bit longer, but 
I, I definitely respect what you're doing. Wholesale is the way to go. Do I dis disinfect sanitize the shoes I buy? I do not disinfect them, but I do clean the shit out of them to make sure they're as clean as possible before I send them to the customer. Also, it doesn't take that much work to basically add 15, 20 dollars to the value of a shoe, even with just some basic wipes. Um, I do wear one of those masks. Um, I don't know if that's preventing me from getting any diseases, but I do that anyway. Let's see. How come I don't have a self.com store like Shopify? I just don't have the time to market the store. It costs money. I like to pay eBay their 10% to find me the customer. I don't have to do any marketing. I literally do zero marketing other than social media. And this isn't even my main store. If, if my fans are buying products, that's great, but that's not the main source of traffic. I'm paying eBay for their millions and millions of customers. But I will have a Shopify store for my um, private label product, which I'm going to launch after I hit my eBay goals. Be patient. Do one thing at a time. Um, shoes, your first pair was returned. Um, you're going to have to expect a 3 to 5% return when you're getting started at least. Um, some people get as high as 10% returns, especially if you don't um, describe them properly and use. For me, when I sell used um, shoes, I take all 12 pictures to get people the best description I can to reduce the um, returns. I don't measure used shoes though. Do I mess with women's jeans much? Yeah, I want to have at least 1,000 pairs of jeans. I'd rather have all men, but I'll mess with women's jeans for sure. Am I factoring? Oh, that's true. I didn't even factor in the final value fees savings from having a store. So Shane just mentioned that in the uh, chat. There's so many benefits to having a store, um, except for maybe if you're Shazad and you have 31 wholesale items, then maybe you don't need a store. But um, if Shazad can get to 250 replenishable products, he's going to slay. Guys, one of the biggest um, guys that's in my, in my group has um, 20,000 replenishable items on eBay. 20,000 replenishable items. Shazad, can you, believe, can you even fathom that? 20,000 items that you can reorder, and he does um, $3 million a year on eBay. Right? That's a real freaking eBay business, right? So that, that took some time. It took him multiple years to get 20,000 replenishable items. But Shazad, you're well on your way. Only uh, 19,969 more products. <laughs> um, yes, I'm going to have 10,000 unique items in my big store. And also one of the reasons I'm doing that is it has... When you sell used items, there's less competition, and I'm um, not super keen on using a tool like Joe Lister for repricing. I just don't know how to use those tools yet. When you sell new items, you need to be really paying attention to the pricing. So I don't really want to pay, pay attention to the pricing. I want to list items that are relatively rare right now. But as I build up more capital, who knows, um, I may sell a lot more new with tags items because it's easier and use a repricer. Let's see. You have a UK pharmacy. That's awesome. So um, I wonder if you can get ungated to sell that stuff on Amazon UK because that sounds like a gold mine, my friend. Um, let me know if you have any specific questions. I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. There's a lot of people that have giant wholesale accounts in my group. Um, I don't... And I'm not, I'm not asking them like, hey, can you give me my connect, give me your connection that you spent five years developing? Like it takes time. So I'm going to be patient with my wholesale. Right now I'm doing a thrift game because the margins are really high, but you can't replenish the item. So definitely need to get into wholesale. Uh, Michael's listing the items as returns not accepted. I use a 60-day return policy, but you can do whatever you want. Um, even other platforms like Poshmark, there are no, there are no returns, period. So... No returns is good, but for me as a buyer, I like returns. So I am basically listing my store the same way I like to shop, which is free shipping, returns on everything. Um, I sell new tags on eBay. Um, yeah, so Laura is in the chat. She has a channel. You guys, Thrifty Boss Babe, she's awesome. She's the one I went sourcing with on Saturday. You guys should follow her channel, uh, get her started. And... Um, on the right foot. New with tags items, I sell a lot of them on eBay, but it is better to send them into Amazon because you get a higher, a higher price. 
let's see. I should go to the green room meetup. I haven't. I, it's, I'm just too busy. I'm trying to build too many things right now. So I'm actually considering not going to eBay Open, even though I already bought a ticket, just because I would rather list 500 items than go to eBay Open. I can be completely honest, but. I may go down there um, just to network with people, but I've already done like in the, you know, patting myself on the back for doing a great job networking. I know so many people now in the eBay community. I'm full right now, but I may go down and hang out with some friends, but I'm, I'm already networked out. Yes, I always accept returns. Um, Oh, you're saying, well, okay, that's true. I'm not referring to you guys as my competition. It is, it is a community. I mean, I, the Instagram community is the best. I basically stopped using Facebook because it was really negative, so I'm not on Facebook anymore. It's a little bit annoying to listen to old timers complain about their slow eBay sales. On Monday, I'm starting a new show with um, a couple new Patreon members. So Kevin, you guys know the clutch swag. Um, Sam, OSS Empire and a prince so those three guys they're they're young bucks they're a lot younger than me they're like 10 years younger than me they're slaying it on ebay all three of them do over twenty thousand a month and they're all young and they're all like rolling with the punches when ebay changes they change they don't bitch about it on facebook so i'd rather hang out with those kinds of people than old timers on facebook for the most part let's see i know i need to come out well laura and i are going to do a double day out here locally in uh, down in san francisco um because her family is awesome wow um she's always talking about crazy competition but that that is um just the reality um that's why i like selling used items because used items have a lot less competition but guys i'm gonna hop off um, i'm gonna give you the profit update on friday look forward to the new show on mondays with um, a new patreon group you guys can see uh, actual live mastermind. So in my group, obviously I have um, people who pay $100 a month to be in a mastermind group of five other sellers and share ideas. Um, that's probably the most value you can get. Um, but again, it's kind of expensive. So I don't expect that many people to do it. It's capped at 50, but you guys can actually see what that looks like on Monday because Prince, Kevin, and, um, Prince, Kevin and Sam have agreed to have their call be public. So the call that we have, I normally have it private. You guys will be able to listen in on basically the premium, premium good stuff. All right, guys, I gotta hop off. I gotta ship a bunch of stuff. I'll see you in a couple of days.